to welcome some of our favorite people from the University of Maryland Extension office. We have Rachel and Cheryl. Ladies, thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having us, Bruce. Thank of you. Of course. Yeah. So can you tell the people before we get started what you do with the Extension office? And we'll start with you, Rachel. So um, my job with the University of Maryland Extension is to be the horticulture educator and the master gardener coordinator for Queen Anne's County. So awesome. I get to go out and talk to people about growing vegetables or flowers, and I help with the Master Gardener program. Right, and we have tons of videos with you on our YouTube page if you want to yeah. learn a lot more about everything from mulching and planting seeds to growing, some growing frogs. shrubbery. <laughs> <laughs> and Cheryl, what do you do for the county? Well, I am the Family and Consumer Sciences agent in Queen Anne's County, and so nutrition, health, and wellness is more my field with human nutrition and also food preservation. Uh, we are, you know, have a great team here throughout all of Maryland, so we do lots of classes. We've been doing a lot of virtual classes, and we're coming back to in-person classes where we take this on the road like we are today here. Hey, whatever this is. Whatever. Whatever this is. <laughs> So today, again, if you're just joining us, we're going to learn how to make some waffles. We're going to learn how to make them with stuff from your garden. So we have both these ladies here to teach us a lot of information. So please like and comment. We're following along with you live. If you have any questions, drop them right in the comments for us and we'll ask our professionals. Or if you just want to tell us what you think of what you're seeing. But we're going to let Rachel take it away because you're going to introduce us to the herb section first, right, Rachel? Yeah, I'm going to get to talk to you guys about growing herbs in your garden. And, um, and then Cheryl will talk about ways that you can use them in your cooking. So I like to grow a variety of annual and perennial herbs. Annual herbs that are, are plants that you plant every year and perennials are ones that will come back after, you know, multiple years. So in this pot over here, I have a variety of different mint that I like to grow and they're a great annual. And then I have some basil over here as well. I like to put plants together that like the same growing environments. So basil over here is actually an annual, but because it likes dry, full sun, I placed it with my perennials. Um, so that's a really great annual that you can grow and use in a variety of different dishes and that you can save through drying or freezing. So what are like popular dishes to add basil to if you've oh. never used basil? Pesto is my, my ultimate favorite thing to make. The, so we have to do another show. On how, where to, you, make where how to make your, oh. the ultimate Rhodes pesto. Yes, yeah, yeah, I'll share my recipe with Cheryl. <laughs> <laughs> make sure it's, uh, you know, healthy. Um, and then you can put it in different pasta dishes, either fresh spaghetti or pasta salad. It's a really great versatile herb. And there are many different varieties that you can grow from black basil to sweet basil to Thai basil. And they each have different elements that they are in different tastes and flavors that, um, that pair well with a variety of dishes. Um, there are also like 160 different cultivars of basil, so you can, you know, make sure that you find the basil that fits best to your palate. It loves to grow in full sun, and it really doesn't like that, um, it doesn't like getting a lot of shade, so you need, it needs to be in full sun. So there's different basil. Yeah. Which, like, which you've already blown my mind, because I just, I knew there was varieties. green basil, that's all I knew. Yeah. Yeah, and <laughs> so Cheryl what, has some what, purple basil. What are we using basil. today, do you know? We're using sweet basil. Is that, is that what green. you like to use a lot, Cheryl? I love using that, especially for the pesto, for the meats, the soups, the sauces. But I am so intrigued about this, that purple basil, uh, because that's something new to me. And yeah. a colleague of mine gave it to me. So we're going to try that now. Yeah. And there's also sweet Thai basil, which is a really good um, basil to use in different Thai dishes or it's amazing. It's a great, it's a great. So that's a whole show on its own. Yeah, exactly. We can do different dishes every week. There you go. All right, what else are we working with? So we have mint over here and we all, I mean, who doesn't love mint? I love the way it smells. I make mint tea in the summer. Um, and then you can use it for other drinks that we're not allowed to talk about, right? Um, but I have three different varieties here. I have spearmint, peppermint, and pineapple mint. 
Um, and pineapple mint is one of my favorites because it has this variegated leaf and it's a little bit hairy and it has that hint of pineapple flavor. There's also apple mint and lemon mint. So you can find what you like for your garden. The only thing with mint is that it grows through rhizomes. So you really do wanna make sure that you keep it in a container. If you plant it directly in the ground, it's gonna spread throughout your entire garden or your landscaping plants, and then you're just gonna have mint everywhere. So keep it in a container, keep it safe. And even the dish that I have it in has a bottom so that, that it doesn't escape because I don't want it to escape. I had no idea it was that serious. It's like bamboo, right? Like uh, that's an issue. Kind of, wow, kind that's of. Crazy. I had yeah. no idea. Yeah, um, and so it's really, really easy to propagate this plant and then share it with your friends. So what you would do is just break a little four inch section off. And then, so I have about four inches here. And then with each leaf, it's actually a node. So I break these off like this, like this, and then stick it in some water and in about two weeks, I'm going to have roots and I can just plop that little plant in another container and share Boom. it. Mid. Yeah. So, and I did that six weeks ago with this guy. And now I have a mint plant that I can gift to Bruce or Cheryl. And you know, well, you have to pick. Yeah. You can Only pick. one of us can have one. Yeah. Well, I have two. Ah, you came prepared. Bruce, <laughs> it's, it's all about digestion. Mint is wonderful for um, any problems with digestion. So it's very your true. Different flavors, so if it's gonna help, then you get to get it. Are we, are we gonna throw mint in our waffles today? Yeah, we're not. We are throwing mint in something else. Oh, not okay. the waffles. So stay tuned. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love mint. I love, I always grow mint in my garden. Um, so over here, I have rosemary, variegated thyme, and some sage. These are all perennial plants. Um, and they're, they're all together because they like to grow together. They're friends. They're friends, okay. yeah. But another great annual that I always grow is dill. And that is primarily because with my family, we do a lot of um, canning. So we make a lot of pickles. Um, and dill is a really good herb to add in pickles. Yeah. But I also grow it primarily for the swallowtail caterpillars. So you can see on this picture, there's some little tiny dots, almost. They're um, swallowtail eggs. And the swallowtail butterfly will actually lay her eggs on anything in the carrot family. So carrots, parsley, Queen Anne's lace, dill, bronzed fennel, regular fennel. Um, and that she lays her eggs on those plants because that's the host plant for the caterpillar. Um, so they're, they will decimate your, your plant. So I always have some sacrificial plants. Um, just for the caterpillars. And then once the caterpillars get a little big, I move them into my butterfly house and grow them out until they're um, big enough to survive on their own. Like children. Like children. They're my little baby <laughs> toddlers in the summer. I love it. Um, and then we do this really cool thing with my kids in the, um, in the summer too. We go on caterpillar hunts at night because they will actually glow with a UV light. I feel like that's a good time to move to the next picture, right? It is, oh. it is. So these are actually swallowtail caterpillars glowing on dill, which is so cool um, to go out and, you know, f try to find them. And you can actually convert your iPhone to a black light camera. You can find those directions on online uh -huh. with different markers and tape and stuff, or you could buy a UV flashlight. Right, right, right. Whatever. Wow. Yeah. But it's super fun. And there are other b caterpillars in your garden that actually will glow as well. So you can pick out some bad caterpillars or some good caterpillars. So, so Cheryl, are we adding swallowtail it. caterpillars to the waffles Ooh, today? we're gonna make sure that we don't <laughs> okay, that's enough. Okay. it there. No, <laughs> no. Good no. bugs, bad bugs. <laughs> I would have brought some with me today, but they all went into their chrysalis this week. Uh. So I didn't have anything fun. Sorry. Camera shy. Yeah, they were. They, they, they were like, Bruce, I can't deal with this. <laughs> Yep. So, and then we, and those are like my annuals, my top three annuals that I always grow. And then I do always have thyme and rosemary and sage in big containers on my, um, 
deck because I love to have those throughout the winter and they will survive if they're in a protected area. You know, sometimes our winters can get a little cold. So if I know we're gonna have like a heavy frost or snow, I'll move my containers into the garage or somewhere where they're gonna be protected. But they will, if they're in a protected area, they will last. These perennials, rosemary, thyme, sage, they can live in the ground here. You don't have to put them in a container. They can be in a raised bed, but if you're going to put them in the ground, make sure it's a well-drained area, which can be kind of a problem on the Eastern shore, especially in Queen Anne's County. It gets a little wet. A little wet. Mm -hmm. Just a smidge. Yeah, a smidge. Yeah. So rosemary is a hardy perennial. Um, it prefers full sun and it really hates to be overly watered. So like with this container, it is um, ceramic. So I will probably water it like every couple of days. Whereas the mint, I'm gonna water every day because it likes to have wet feet. <laughs> That's what we call it in gardening. Like, no, I, you know, I believe you. <laughs> I didn't know what wet. to call it, so I'm gonna use that now too. <laughs> so, uh, and so, Sage, rosemary, and thyme all have a woody stem, so propagating them is a little bit more um, involved. So for the mint, I can drop it in water and it will have roots in like two weeks. Whereas my rosemary, I did it six weeks ago and it's just starting to get roots on it. And when that happens, I like to wait until the roots are about two inches long before I put it in some soilless mix. And I don't put them in direct garden soil because garden soil can have some bacteria or some fungus that can really um, hurt the plant when it's trying to grow. And soilless mix has none of that. And you can find different varieties of soilless mix in your garden center or online. I really like these um, pellets because they're nice and condensed. Um, and it's usually coconut coir, vermiculite, and peat moss and you just add a little bit of water to them and they expand. So this little pellet will fill this whole um, container. And then you can find even bigger ones that are about this size, or you can even find ones that are blocks that you just break off. So they're really cool. Um, and then I ha also have some time that I started about six weeks ago. And with that, I did the soilless mix as well in that container. Now, now when you say time, Time. I'm going to need you to sing it. Oh, you don't want to hear my singing <laughs> Oh, I do. Oh, I definitely do. <laughs> I put that on the screen just for you. You did? And the people, the people need to hear it. You don't want to hear it. You know, mm. when I sing, my son actually says, Mommy, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, not time for that. Exactly. Yeah. Well, no time for singing. <laughs> Mommy, okay, no, okay. don't sing. Fair enough. Go ahead. All right, so a really easy way to, you know, promote root growth if you're doing it directly into the soil is with some rooting hormone. Um, and this is just a, a, a powder and you do the same thing that I got, like I was doing with the mint where I strip it off for two inches. So I would take a little bit of time and then strip it off. So I have at least two no nodes right there, two spots where the leaves were, and I would just dip it in the rooting hormone and then dip it in and then plant it in the soil. And then you should have a nice little plant like this in six weeks. Dy dynamite no. cut there, uh, yeah. Marshall and Chris. <laughs> That was, that was they, they, they had exactly what you were saying on the screen. It was oh, perfect. Awesome. You guys are doing good. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you to you our booth today. Awesome. Um, so with thyme, there are actually 300 different varieties of thyme. So, no, look, you all are getting silly with herbs. <laughs> like, I, I, I barely even know what time is to use it, and now you're telling me there's three. Oh, my God. So I use thyme a lot in um, different dishes, but I have this marinade that I use it for. It's um, like a honey, honey mustard marinade with thyme and rosemary that I use mm. for pork loins. It's amazing. That sounds good. And thyme has such anti-inflammatory properties that it is used in toiletries, cosmetics, a lot of different things. So it isn't yeah. just food that these many, many varieties that yeah. you're talking about. Here, Bruce, you got to smell this. It. Smell it. it smells so smell good. It. It smells like lemony. It's, such an it's aroma. amazing. An aroma. It's like, it smells almost oh, like yeah. pledge. Yeah. It smells like a clean house. Yeah. It does. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so it's a great little herb to have. And it doesn't take up a lot of space. Um, and this is a really easy one. Like all of the rest that you can just put in a 
container and then give to a friend when you have some extra. They actually have creeping time that you can put in between pavers. It's creeping time. I like yeah. the name. <laughs> and it's very, it has a low growing habit and you can plant it in your garden around pavers and stuff like that to have some greenery. Um, and if you're going to do that, I wouldn't suggest eating those things that you're going to walk on, you know. But um, sage, I grow sage a lot too. It's a nice woody perennial. It's from the Mediterranean, so it likes full sun, well-drained soil, like all of these other ones. Um, and that's why they're together. Exactly. They, they grow well together. Yeah. Great. I so, know, right? I... <laughs> So before we go over to waffles, right? We yeah. want we want to make sure everyone has the information from you of where to go and to get more information. So could you give them a website? Oh yeah. So if you want any tips about growing herbs or vegetables, you can go to extension.umd.edu um, and then search for the Home and Garden Information Center, and it'll take you to our page where we have things about growing vegetables or flowers or herbs. You can also find us on um, the Garden Time podcast. We have a Facebook page. We have a Master Gardener Facebook page as well. Um, and our July episode for our podcast should be released next week, I think. Awesome. And if yeah. you're interested in herbs or gardening or anything mm -hmm. like that, please listen to the Garden Time podcast because I've heard you guys record it live when you used to do it in the studio. <laughs> yeah. You have so much fun. Yes, we do. You, we have a ton are, of fun. You guys have a great time. So Thank you'll you. have a great time listening. Check out that it's podcast. It's fun to watch. Head Even to the national winner. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So is it time? Are, can we, are we going to finally show people how to make this stuff? Yes. Oh, I'm so waffles, excited. The main event. And I'm going to step on down off this chair so I can sure, get yeah. to work here. So if you're watching, <laughs> we're going to now learn how to incorporate everything you just learned about <laughs> herbs into making waffles with Cheryl. Please leave a comment if uh, you have any questions about what Cheryl is using or why she's using anything, and we'll make sure to direct it towards her. Or but if, we're going to let you get started. Okay, if Bruce uh, looks great with his new... Uh, yeah, this is my thing turn. now. We're gonna, I'm going to make him a time wreath. <laughs> yes. Bruce, I like yeah. it. Yes. Hey, plural leaf. I'll, I'll be very pretty. <laughs> well, very yeah, midsummer. I'm yes. Cheryl, and I'm here to do just like Bruce was saying, kind of incorporate all these great herbs that uh, Rachel was talking about today. And I picked waffles because it was National Waffle Iron Day the other day, and we just wanted to extend it into a week because there's so many delicious ways you can make waffles. So we're going to start off. Our first recipe is basically waffles and oats. And I have to tell you, I had um, someone that was in my home that really kind of needed gluten-free at the time. So because I was doing all this testing with the waffles, you're going to see my um, gluten-free variety here. So it starts with the oats, and that's one and a half cup. And the neat thing about this whole recipe is that you're going to actually just throw it right into your food processor and do everything right in there. So I have that. And then my two teaspoons of baking powder. And that baking powder is going to help with that rise, right? I always thought it was fascinating watching my father make waffles on Sundays because it's baking and it's kind of a steaming and it's a grilling process. So it has to have something to make that rise, and that's that baking powder. So your salt, very not too much, a quarter teaspoon of that. And just to get this consistency right, I did go with um, an all-purpose gluten-free flour. Just gave a quarter cup, and it gives a little more body, and I just loved how it tasted. So, I'm really excited about this. this. We make waffles every yeah. day. Yeah, this recipe was originally from um, the healthy oat waffles, herbs, and flour. Mm -hmm. So I'm giving them the credit, and I also just took and did some little changes with flavorings, things like that, um, to again make it gluten free and make it our own. Uh, all you do next is take um, two eggs. Again, you're just combining this right wet right over the dry, putting everything in that food processor. I've got one and a quarter cup of um, almond-based, plant-based beverage. So you can pick soy, you can do the almond. Can we do whole milk? You, or? Can, you can change this recipe to go back to anything like that, the whole milk can or I your non it up and If you want to go skim. Bailey's and cream. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and what I am doing to give this that extra boost of flavor is uh, saturated fat. This is coconut oil, just a quarter cup. It gives this a really good base, a good flavor for when we're going to add our herbs. Mm -hmm. 
If you decide to go and make sure that you're trying to stay away from that saturated fat, you can always take and pick, you know, a canola oil. Mm -hmm. So, so this oil. recipe you're making now, how many does this uh, make? This actually can make four waffles. Okay. Okay. And pure vanilla extract. We really just want to have a small amount of taste of that. So I'm going to put some pure vanilla, about a little bit over an eighth, a teaspoon. And this then, is a little more involved than my egos that I yeah. put in Just a smidge. A little bit. <laughs> but I have a feeling it's going to taste better. Oh, they're so good. You get to yeah. taste them too today. Almond flavoring. This is kind of my piece de resistance. This, if you use in any kind of baking, adds so much to it. Gives it so much extra flavor. So I added that to this recipe, and that really pairs well with that almond plant-based beverage too. Just gives that that little extra something. So try it with cooking, you know, baking a um, things like uh, muffins and oh, cookies, things like that. Okay. So with that, that's our base. And all I need to do is get my food processor set up here. And we can throw, if you're just joining us, you can throw the uh, ingredients up on the screen so we can see everything while you're processing, so okay. you know what you're looking for. Just a little bit of noise. That's it. <laughs> That's ready. Now, everyone's kids, I know, Sherry, your kids are older now, and Richard, your kids are younger. That's true. But all waffle fans, right? All waffle fans. That's, that's a very universal breakfast item, I feel like. It is. It is. Um, we usually do blueberry waffles at our house. Mm. Um, we have some big blueberry fans, and uh, or chocolate chip. Yeah, that, yeah mm. chocolate chip, that's what Kennedy likes. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to pour this ahead into my And bowl. I think having a waffle maker is probably like the best investment in a kitchen, besides a mixer. And a the best. Yeah. <laughs> that is the a best. bold statement. It is. It's I, just I, so much fun. We eat a lot of waffles fun. at our house, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, you said you like blueberry waffles, yeah, right? Yeah, blueberry. You do blueberry. Yeah. Yep. Oh, they're just so good. And they are so versatile, as you can see. Today, there's just so many different recipes that are available with it. Yeah. So. Okay. So I'm going to tuck those aside. And you say, keep calm, bake on, right? Yeah. Got to. Now, with the waffle iron, it is really important um, that you give it kind of a, a pre-treat. Okay, so I'm just taking a little bit of a non-cooking spray. It has been warming up here, so it should take and make this waffle fairly quickly. But it's really important so that it doesn't stick. Okay. And then I'm really going to take and make about half a cup. So I have my quarter cup measure and do a couple of those in there. Well, this is what we're having for lunch, right? Yes. I know. I actually, I, I, uh, I brought fruit oh. for, for, for my lunch normally. And I almost for a split second forgot we were doing waffles. Oh. I was going to eat before we went live no. when you guys were coming in. And I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, you know, now you can add your fruit to this. But... That's what I wanted to show you next, is that we don't always have to use syrup on our waffles. Um, I wanted to try to show you a fruit salad that Rachel and I had talked about. What an accidental transition I just did for you. I know, That's amazing. I know, I, know right? I have all of that here to show everyone. So this fruit salad is an orange zested fruit salad. And maybe Rachel, if you could come over and help me because we're gonna try to take this mint that you had grown for us mm -hmm. and add that into this. So okay. basically what I wanna try to do is just add my strawberries first. Okay, I'll be a frugal cook here. And then mm. wonderful blueberries. Oh, those are pretty. And it's oh, blueberry so season good. right now. Yes, so this is the time. Go to your local pick your own and get some fresh blueberries. Oh, I'm just this oh. was not in your face. Oh, I don't mind. These blackberries. Well, I want the people to see what you guys are doing. We're a homemade gift from a friend. They grew these right there. Oh, those are beautiful. Oh, aren't they beautiful? They're so big. They're beautiful. I'm hearing the steaming of the waffle as it's cooking. And then the raspberry. So. This is the mint, mm -hmm. okay? And if you could just dice that very um, fine. And okay. I only need about a quarter cup, so okay. I'm gonna add that into here. While Rachel's doing that too, I'm gonna start on a little bit of a addition that ends up giving this salad just that oomph it needs. Okay, so I right, right reach there. So while we're doing that, what's your favorite fruit? 
Well, Cheryl. I think cherries right now. Oh, <laughs> I've been enjoying yeah, the cherry sweet season. cherries. Oh, I like cherries, and they're so good too. Again, anti-inflammatory. Um, you can cook it with, use them in so many different ways. Love cherries. So my husband got me cooked, hooked on that though. Cherry, I'm. I'm a strawberry person, I think. Yeah. Fresh strawberries, strawberries in season, not strawberries in December. Right. Um, <laughs> but if you've listened to the podcast, I always say that everything's my favorite. Yes. Um, yes. You know, it depends on the day. <laughs> it depends really on the day. I'm, I love donut peach season. Have you seen those little donuts? Or they, they're peaches oh, and they're, they're like the size of a, a lemon and they're cool smashed size. like a donut. What? Oh, peaches that's, are my favorite. Yeah, peaches. so... Look for them, they're coming out right about now, and they are absolutely my favorite. Where in the world do you find those at? Um, there is an orchard up in Kent County that grows them, and they're usually in your um, grocery stores right about now, too, if you um, haven't found them locally. Um, but it's a very short season. It's like maybe a week, so you have to be on top of it, you know. You got it. Yeah. I'll do my best. Yeah. Uh, seriously, when I see them, I usually buy like 10 and make myself sick because I just buy donut pizza. <laughs> All right, well, let's make, let's just make an excuse now for you to come back and film and you just bring those. Okay. Okay, deal. We could do something with peaches. So, so what is this that you were adding? What we're going to make here as the waffle continues to cook and, and Rachel's um, leading the mint chopping is basically um, a honey and lemon juice. And that lemon juice will break down the fruit rather quickly. So that's why I'm making this separately. And you add it to the fruit just before you're going to serve it. And then I'd also like to take my zester. I love orange zest. And so I'm going to take a little bit of that and just go right into that right behind here. here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> It's so easy, it adds so much flavor. Just a little bit of that orange and some extra vitamin C. We've got a lot of vitamin C, a lot of antioxidants in this dish. I think that's good. Yeah, that looks plenty. So when you're making waffles at home, Mm -hmm. do, you, do you normally do fruit as your topping instead of syrup? Do you do both? Do you yes. like just syrup? Yeah. I like both, but then on the zucchini waffle, I'm going to show you a trick, something else I learned that can go in there to make it really um, stand out. You can have the extra syrup with the savory. Yeah. So I usually mm -hmm. do fruit Thank or you. I do honey. I like mm -hmm. honey. Ooh, I like bit. bananas and honey. That's usually my, uh, my go-to for, yeah. for breakfast topping. Oh, nice. Mm. Yeah. But honey is one of my favorite things to add as a syrup alternative. So, get ready. Hopefully this waffle's coming along. So usually, if we're going to a cookout, yeah. this is like the dish that I make. Really? Yeah. It's oh. a great, like, little fruit salad. It just is. To make. So it doesn't have to be just a breakfast time or mm -hmm. right any yeah. time. So. I make a box of Harris Teeter uh, produced food. Oh, that's yeah, what, like that's a veggie what I tray? Bring. Yeah, whatever it is. It doesn't matter. <laughs> whatever, as long as I'm not the one making it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Get some of my out of the way here. All right. So, just taking the honey mixture and pouring that over, and it's honey with the lemon. Did you grow this honey? No. <laughs> no. You I do the, see you, a you lot of. The, I do see a lot of people though doing that more and more. Yeah. 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 I see it a lot. Like how I use I the term honey. grow. Yeah. Like, smack you, me. you don't grow honey. Grow honey. <laughs> <laughs> I fixed it. I want to be clear. I knew what I was talking about. <laughs> if you do know how to grow honey, though, that is a, a money business maker. right there. It is. Look into that. Where's Elon yeah. Musk on that one? Find your local beekeeper and purchase mm. some honey from them because there's nothing better than local nothing better. Honey. And it's great for anyone that has allergies. Yeah, it's very true. If you use local honey, it's, uh, you know you're going to be able to um, not get any uh, problem with those allergies. So, all right. So we are ready for that. As soon as our waffle's ready, I was going to put it onto here and maybe have you get a taste. <laughs> so how, how long is the is the waffle? take normally so if someone was planning on making it it can be um depending on how much you know um, liquid that you have in there and this one's a little bit more um liquidy that it can take a little bit more like five minutes mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. six minutes this one's taking a little bit 
um, and it's a very light color um, that I'm getting today. But that could be different. Sometimes it's a little bit darker in color, right? So, mm -hmm. okay. so I'm going to take and lift this off. And that waffle maker also has like a light, so it will say it will go green when it's ready. So a lot of your waffle makers will just say, "Hey, I'm ready now. I'm ready. Come eat me." No beep, no beeps, whistle, just the green light, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's a wonderful waffle maker. I don't think I've ever owned a waffle maker. What? Yeah. You just got married. That should have been on your registry. We asked for money. <laughs> <laughs> We had a story before we went live about this, Rachel. Very true. <laughs> I'm going to, while this waffle iron's still hot, finish up um, with our uh, little demo with this, and then we can try some of this waffles mm -hmm. and fruit. Uh, that's okay. what we're here for. Okay. The what people at home do not do... get to enjoy that part. No. <laughs> that's, that's when they get mad and they turn off our video. <laughs> Oh, I just want to show a little bit about taking and um, washing some basil and cutting that basil because I wanted to add that into um, this waffle mix for the last one, which is the savory herb waffle. It has zucchini. Okay, so I just have a cup of that and I use the food processor and got that shredded. Well, that's a great addition because yeah. most of our gardens, we have a plethora of zucchini coming right. on. So how this can we use it? That's so a great cool. idea. Then we have Parmesan cheese. You know, mm. I like that Parmesan cheese. It's a very strong cheese. You don't yeah. need too much of it. So I've just got two tablespoons of the parm. And then I have parsley. And I love parsley. It also is, you know, very anti-inflammatory. It's also clearing. Um, helps a lot if you have a cold. Get out the parsley. Get out the thyme. So the last is this basil. So thank you, Rachel, for bringing that to mm -hmm. me. Oh, the basil, Chris. Basil. I love the basil. Basil, basil. And I believe that um, we show how to wash the basil so that yeah, you can... Yeah, can we get that video at Washington? Yeah, there it is. Yeah, that would be great. I'm just going to go ahead and use Was, a was this a video here. of you actually washing basil, or did you steal yes. it? Yes, no, no. No, you we actually that, No. Hey, that we want to make sure that what we give you are pictures and things that we've done ourselves. <laughs> we're going to get you a job here. Look, look, see, you don't need us. You can film. <laughs> you have to have two people to do that kind of stuff. Oh, oh right. right. Yeah. Yeah, we worked hard on our cinematography skills. Yeah, it took us a couple of tries. <laughs> oh, we're not experts like you guys over no, here. So. No. so I'm just going to really basically give this a little bit of a rinse, make sure that it's nice and healthy. We actually have cleaned up our basil and grab a paper towel. I thank you for this extra table behind me. That has helped a lot with this demo today. Thank you. Oh, that was Chris. Great setup. I was going I was going to leave you with nothing. Oh, Chris this is thought great. Chris thought our table have it all set for me. Thanks. So when you're cutting basil, a really nice technique is called chiffonade. And you're basically taking the basil and folding it and rolling it up, the leaves on top of each other, into the tightest little um, roll that you can. So it looks like a cigar shape. And when you chop it, then you just chop through because you don't want to have a real dark color. Um, you want you don't want to bruise it, and it does bruise easily. So you just take one slight chop through there. But because you've rolled it, you have all of that cut so fine already. So all you have to do is take a few more chops through there. You ladies are so smart. So neat. So much fun to learn all these things. There's always something new to learn. Extension, no days the same. Nope. No. <laughs> is that your logo? That should, no, it, should not, be. it should be. It should be. Yeah. It should be. <laughs> new day, new stuff. <laughs> And I feel like basil is one of those versatile herbs where you can use it in, you know, almost anything. Right. And I just, I just need a little. What I learned in doing some of my taste tests and having my people at home to help me was that I needed more parsley than the basil. You just need a little bit because it is got yeah. so much stuff. So. Chris and I found out that basil is becoming popular in smoothies. Oh. Recently. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh very Sounds healthy. Good. Yeah. Got another Maybe we way should to do that next that time. Up. Let's yeah. make some green smoothies. <laughs> so all I'm doing is making sure I mix this well. And as I say, this is going to give it a little more texture um, than the first waffle. So we'll see this come up a little bit looking differently, too, with those beautiful herbs in it. So will it take longer to cook because it, might. it is yeah. thicker? Yeah, it might. It did a little bit at home where I had to kind of watch it. So could I, since this has Parmesan and basil and oh. parsley, could I put spaghetti sauce and cheese on top? Mm. <laughs> you're, you're really mixing, mixing, that would be the next show. I mean, Does it's it kind work of like a with pizza. Rachel? Right. 
<laughs> I'm going to make a this a pizza. big one, too, so that, that way we can pizza waffle. really get it. Come on, that like sounds it. good. Hey, I'm, I'm not hating. <laughs> okay, and here we go. And let that go, and you'll see um, when you're looking at waffles, they steam, so mm -hmm. they're baking with steam. You know, they're baking with the grilling action that that is, um, and it's just, I don't know, they just fascinate me. <laughs> they always yeah. did. Um, my dad would make them on the weekends. Not yeah. my mom, my dad, he liked doing that. So. I love making <laughs> waffles. That's yep. one of my favorites. Just fun. And you can yeah. see the ingredients up on the screen now for yeah. the yeah. one that we just did. Right. Yeah, it's really the same base as the first one, the waffle and oats. And mm -hmm. then instead of some of those flavorings, you're adding in the basil and the parsley, the Parmesan cheese. So zucchini, when you um, grated your zucchini, did you like um, suck the water out some way? Because it can yeah. get a little watery. It can get watery. So that's what the tip is, is to kind of push that, that water, water out. out. But yeah. um, basically just took the, you know, cuisine hair, just shredded it up. Oh, nice. So, so you used easy. your food processor to right. cut it That's to awesome. do that and then also to just make this um, wonderful dish. So. so if I didn't have a food processor to do the zucchini, I could just use a grater? Yeah, you could do that and just work at that a little bit more yeah. muscle. You'd have to yeah. put into that, but hey, that's good, right? Yeah. Use that energy up. Although if you have a lot of zucchini, <laughs> if you work it at it with this heat. Oh, hey, yeah. You got that family of 10, you're making yeah. 30 waffles. <laughs> oh, this is zucchini. Oh. <laughs> Lots oh. of zucchini bread, yeah, too. Right. And as you can see, with this one, as I mentioned, a um, little bit more saturated fat. This one's showing 11 grams of saturated fat. But again, if you choose a lower fat oil, then um, that will help bring that down if you're trying to watch things because of any kind of heart issues or heart um, conditions. Mm -hmm. so, that you oh, want to bring that down. So, anyway, I'm going to get out some plates and some forks I brought for you both and knife. So. Nice. Nice. Let's do that. <laughs> so, while we're getting the food served up, did you want to talk uh, about? the one option that we don't have to show, but you wanted to actually bring attention sure. to? Sure. This was another we'll one. We'll make our way over there to oh, join that's you. Yeah. yeah, another one because I had my friends with me a while, so, um, and tried again to say, well, what can we do about gluten-free? So why don't you, why don't you no, join no, no. around? Oh, I'll stand yeah. here. I'm not important. Okay. What we're going to do you? is we're going to go ahead and get a knife and serve that up. Actually, this would be better. But going to take that, put my fingers there, and then if you just want to take um, and put some um, fruit fruit right on there. Do you need another spoon? <laughs> I have it. I have it. So, just add that on that one. Now, I'm allergic oh, to blackberries, but I'm just going to go for it. Oh, no, you're no. not. <laughs> you go for it. Oh, this one, this uh, waffle parfait, uh, we went to the store, we got a gluten-free frozen waffle. There's the frozen waffle you were talking about. They make a really great one. After you toast those, you just take the half cup of almond butter, spread that on the waffle, cut those in small little pieces, and you're taking and layering your two cups of a non-dairy type yogurt, and the cut bananas, the cut strawberries, and then you can add an option on the top if you want to add some almonds and syrup mm. on it. So. And feel free if you want to add a little bit of real maple syrup, too. Mm, this but does not it, need syrup it, at all. It doesn't no, need it. it. definitely does it not. It doesn't need it. So. This is delicious, Cheryl. I tell you, I, I picked up this plate with the waffle and my fruit uh -huh. and a plastic fork, and I immediately thought, I'm going to struggle trying to cut this. Uh -huh. But it was like butter, man. Yeah, that thing just good. fell apart so easy. Oh, it's so good. That's good. I we have my the other one coming. Waffle recipe. This is very, very good. Oh, this is delicious. Wait till you taste savory against the sweet. It's amazing. Savory. It's just amazing when you taste the zucchini waffle against that. So I wish everybody could do that and try a taste test at home. So give these mm -hmm. a try because they're easy recipes. And again, mm -hmm. look at, I still have a lot of mix left. So you do make quite a bit for your family. Everybody. And people are just yeah. joining us now. I know we have some people that just joined. Our viewers just came in. Can you tell us what or tell them what we're eating, this waffles and oats? This one is waffle and oats, and so it would be gluten-free if those oats are made in a gluten-free um, facility, you know, with no mm -hmm. soy or wheat. Um, and uh, what this is for is just to try to show um, that you can make a delicious waffle, but also not have to use syrup or other sweeteners. There isn't mm -hmm. much sweetener, okay, mm -hmm. that's added to this. Only the leavening agents, the salt to brown it. We used a um, berry, that's an orange zested berry, uh, uh, which just strawberries, blueberries, some fresh blackberries from a friend, uh, and then mint uh, from Rachel's garden. 
by adding that mint in along with um, a honey and lemon juice um, that to just toss that in there, it just kind of pulls all of that fruit together. And it's a, a dish that you can make for any kind of event, not just with your morning breakfast. I love this. I love the addition of almond because right. it really just adds just another dimension it. of flavor. I know. It's that's, really good. I'm telling you, that's my secret ingredient, everybody. If you're going to make cookies, muffins, <laughs> anything, just add a little bit of that almond flavoring. I completely forgot you put almond in. I was trying to place what I was tasting. Oh, okay. And the second you brought back yeah. up, I was like, oh, yeah, it hits right away. You taste yeah. almond right away. But it's a, it's like a very subtle taste. Yeah, almost. oh, yeah. Like, it doesn't it's like it's there, and it's you're just, just like, yeah. what is that? Yeah. Yep, very, very good. Oh, we just had a uh, Vicky Petrie who... Uh, Sent 150 stars and an appreciation heart our way. Thank Aww, you so much, Vicki. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Vicki. Thank Appreciate that. And then tell us one more time what we'll be looking at in a minute when this is done. This is the savory zucchini and oat waffle mm. that we just made and from the same base as our waffle and oats. Um, again, this recipe is credited to the um, uh, herbs and flour uh, site. And I was um, so excited to take it and just kind of tweak it. Um, with this, it's zucchini that's shredded, and then a Parmesan cheese, uh, some chopped parsley, and some chopped uh, basil is added in to make this wonderful waffle. And yeah. it's looking like. And it's not too late to go to ready. your local garden store or big box store and find basil or parsley, thyme, oregano, mint. I, I'm still finding them. You know, it, if you haven't put any in your garden yet and you after watching this and you want to get some just to try it out they're still around and that's a good thing because we'll want to try making these one so yeah. <laughs> i'm going to take and cut through this again to give nice. you some portions hey will in the booth want to come out and try yeah, yeah. give it a try yeah come Look on in chris, chris. Now, is anyone allergic to dairy? Oh, Chris will be fine. Don't worry about it. Okay, because what I like nine one one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. You're not no, not allergic to dairy, right? Because what I tried right. our, with this. Our, our other uh, our intern in there right now. His dad is uh, DES. So if anything bad happens to Chris, we're covered. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we got dad on speed dial. What was amazing with this was sour cream with a little maple syrup. We did different things. We said, oh. what can you put on this to make it right? And this is what we ended up coming up with, and it was really good. So what about like Greek yogurt? Right, like, right. Um, right. Using that instead of sour cream. A little bit of maple syrup? That sounds good, yeah. Okay. I'm trying it. Bruce, All right. why aren't you full from your other one? No, no uh, I was just, I wanted to you know, give Chris his moment. I sharing is not caring when waffles <laughs> are concerned. And then I also did, gave a demo and um, was participant at the uh, Centerville Farm Market this past Sunday. And the wonderful Fat and Happy Farms came by and with the very end of it, gave to all of the vendors a few of their boxes of the microgreens. So I picked pea shoots, oh, man. broccoli Ooh. microgreens. That's just so another reason why I'm you should be there in off. person for the farmer's Absolutely. market. Absolutely. Yeah. There's so many neat things that are being sold and um, are available to share. We had great entertainment with our guitarist, Kevin. So. Yeah. And it's a great way because maybe you don't have you the ability this. to grow your own garden. So if you don't have the ability to grow your own garden, you can go to the farmer's market and they can give you what you need to make all this wonderful stuff, right? Yeah. Right. And so many great suggestions, you know. Like we get an extension, do a lot with adding recipes and getting those out. But this, the farmers themselves have so many great ideas to yeah. give to people. Yeah. yeah, and I'm sure they're so. more than willing to yeah. share while, while you're talking with them. Right. So you are you at the farmer's market every week? Well, no, there was an in-person once a month, and okay. so these are near the end of the month. I'm going to be back in September um, on the 26th doing a demo. Great. So, yeah, can't be out of the heat the next couple months, but yeah, I was there at the beginning, um, and then this month. So. Mm -hmm. That one hit yeah. the spot for you, Rachel? Yeah, it's different. This one's amazing, isn't it? So, you want to try one, Bruce? Can I yeah, 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 I'll come over now. Yeah, okay. I, just yeah. Didn't want, I didn't want to Excellent. fill up the whole area with too many people. I'll give you a good size here, so... Yeah. Look at you being thoughtful. Do you like sour cream? I'll try it. Okay. It's really good. It's I mean, really I, good I know what sour cream tastes like. I mean, I'll yeah. try it. We really, yeah, we really had to struggle with, okay, what goes well on here? We tried a few different things, so. But the and savory so, with the sweet right. of the maple syrup. Right. And I, uh, I chose some pure maple syrup because I think it really gives it that nice flavor. Nice and thick. And do you want a few pea shoots, too? You know, a, I will try. Happy Farms, they yeah. really gave me a lot, so. <laughs> I'll put a few 
few on there for you, not too many stems. So, Rich, while I'm getting served, and I'll give you a couple <laughs> seconds, so I'll buy some time until you're done chewing. Mm -hmm. Could you remind people where they can get uh, more information? Sure. If you'd like more information on growing or Same. cooking with herbs, you can go to extension.umd.edu, and you can search for the Family and Consumer Sciences Department, or you can search for the Home and Garden Information Center, and we can tell you how to grow your herbs and your vegetables, or you can look at Family and Consumer Sciences and get some good recipes. Yeah, and we have other departments. We yeah. work all together out there, so 4-H is out there, as well as all of our ag resources. Yeah, it's an amazing office, it, amazing it, group. Wow, so I did not expect that. Exactly. Yeah. That's so good. I, I, I was kind of scared of the sour cream. No, the sour cream sour makes wow, it Wow, it is so good. <laughs> Chris, what do you think? Very, very um, good. Yeah, good. good. Well, there is more, so if anyone else needs to buy. You hit this out of the park, <laughs> Cheryl. Yeah we, yeah, we have poor Marshall has to do all the switching. Yeah. We'll make sure he We're gets gonna make sure. I'm going to make one up for him now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, ladies, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you so much for teaching us all about some herbs, all about some waffle making. It's a great waffle week. Yeah. Yes. This okay. is going to be my 4th of July recipe. I like <laughs> this it. is delicious. Do we have any parting words of wisdom before we leave the people today? Mm. Happy growing. Mm. Yes. Happy growing. And happy, happy growing. eating, because this yeah. is healthy eating. What a, what a partnership. Happy growing, happy eating. <laughs> Thank you so much, ladies, once again. Please head to their website. Check out the Garden Time podcast. It's amazing time that you can spend with your friends listening to their friends talk about amazing herbs, gardening, and all types of stuff. You guys have a good time. Yeah, I can't plug you guys enough. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks again for joining us. Thanks for watching live. Please give us a like, a comment, a share. Let other people see the wonderful world of cooking with herbs and waffles. And we'll see you next time, sailor. <laughs>